What is up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, in today's video, I wanna talk about resources and tips and tricks for those looking to break into a software engineering position, in particular using the language C++. Now this video is gonna be catered towards the trading or quantitative trading side of software engineering, but nonetheless, if you're somebody looking to break into the space for really any role that uses C++, this video is gonna be invaluable for you. Why do I say that? I'm now a senior software engineer. I manage a team of around two developers. And guys, this video is going to be important because I've sat on the other side of all these interviews. I've hosted dozens of interviews, reviewed hundreds of resumes, both at work and outside of work via my private one-on-one -on -one consulting session. Link in the description box below, guys. And I've helped candidates not only break into the space, but I've also interviewed so many candidates. And I understand what they did right and what they did wrong and what they need to brush up on. So you're lucky because you are watching this video before your first interview, hopefully, in the C++ space. And this is really going to help you knock that interview out of the park. Okay, what is the first resource that I recommend, guys? The first resource that I recommend is a website called LearnCPP.com. LearnCPP.com has over 25 chapters of the fundamentals of C++. And guys, you have no idea how many times I'm interviewing somebody and they get very basic syntax wrong related to C++. They get very basic concepts related to C++ incorrect. Or may, they might just not have been exposed to certain concepts that anybody learning C++ today should really understand. For example, what is a virtual pointer? What is a vtable? What is the difference between a class and a struct? What is a diamond inheritance problem? These are all questions that should easily be answered, but a lot of candidates don't answer it well because they haven't learned about this in school. If they just took the time to go over learncpp.com, spend a week, maybe read two, three chapters a day, they will get not only a solid understanding of the language, they might actually also get a understanding that's stronger than most senior C++ developers out there. Why is that? Because LearnCPP.com, interweaved throughout those chapters, has an advanced section. On the occasion, you'll see an advanced reading section that will be optional, but if you really want to be a strong developer, you'll read that section, and it will go into detail related to concepts that are going to be useful for you to know, might even help you pass an interview just based off that one section that most people actually end up skipping and not reading and not understanding. All right, that's the first resource. And guys, I wrote notes on my computer here because I want to get back to playing Silent Hill 2 Remake. So we're going to fly by these resources and give you guys really the, the core crystallized version of, of what you should be learning. The next resource that I would recommend is a PDF or a book rather, it's in PDF version, by a guy named Jeff Vogels. And the link to these will be in the description box below, guys. And he has a really good book or really good PDF called Trading Systems Developer Interview Guide. Now, this is going to be good for even the non-trading systems interested developer because it asks a lot of low-level and high-level details about the language that is going to be extremely relevant towards that C++ interview. The next really good guide is called CPP Interview Guide by Sandor Dargo. Guys, this is a really good, really good resource. Essentially, it's broken up into several sections and there's a question. And the whole purpose of this guide is sort of like you answer a question a day to remain sharp, but you can essentially read this all in a day if you'd like. It would be a bit of information overload, space it out a little. Um, but it's a really good guide because it asks important questions that you might get in an interview, okay? It asks important questions related to, for, th for example, things like what is a strong type? When should an a constructor be considered explicit? What's the difference between scoped and unscoped enumerations? Guys, the next section or the next thing that I'm going to be describing to you is something that I've been seeing and hearing about more and more in interviews in quantitative trading firms. And that is a movement away from just giving you some hacker rank and telling you, you know, go solve this in 30 minutes. Rather, I see more and more candidates telling me that their interviews are now focused around implementing data structures. What does that mean? It means that companies are looking to see whether or not you understand containers and utilities in C++ on the lower level, more fundamental level. They're seeing whether you have that understanding of how these containers and utilities work under the hood. What do I mean by that? Companies are going to be asking you guys, implement a shared pointer, implement a unique pointer, implement the make unique or make shared function in C++. They might ask you to implement a mutex, a semaphore, 
or a vector. A vector is really popular I hear nowadays for companies to tell you to implement. They might ask you to implement pushback, for example. When they ask you to implement pushback, what they're really seeing is if you understand how memory is allocated via, for example, std allocator, how an object is constructed in memory using placement new, how old objects, objects that either need to be copied over to a new memory buffer or cleared, for example, how their destructors need to be called by you, the user, and then how to deallocate previously allocated memory. Guys, what's going to be important for you as well is if you're looking for ways to implement these key data structures and utilities and you're unfamiliar with doing so, I'm going to be releasing all my own personal implementations that I've done for the sake of this video on my Patreon for all my patrons to go through so that they, they can ask me questions and see my own personal implementation of these data structures. Patreon link guys in the description box below. The next thing that they're probably going to ask you about in an interview, and guys, this is such an easy point to nail, but so many candidates screw it up, is they want to see how involved you are in C++. In other words, how much are you invested in the language? And by that, they're going to ask things like, what version of C++ do you use? If you don't even know what version of C++ you're using, it's over for you. There's no way you've been using C++ for couple of semesters at school and have no idea what you're what you're using. Or you have an internship where you use C++ for three months and you have no idea what version you were using. That's just lazy. All right. That's like the first bare minimum, get your foot in the door type of question related to this section of seeing how involved you are in C++. The next question they're going to ask guys is they're going to ask, for example, if you said you're using C++ 17, they're going to say, tell me about one feature in C++ 17 that was introduced there. Just one. Just and if you don't even have one, it's almost over for you, all right? If they ask you about a feature in C++17 and you say, I like that they added make unique. Sorry, that's C++14. If you say, I like that they added the memory model. Sorry, that's C++11. If you say, I like that they added lambdas. Nope, not C++17, right? They want to hear something like fold expressions, std variant, std optional, right? That's what they want to hear string view, etc. They might also ask you as an extension of that because most companies are now using C++20. They might, a might ask you, what's your favorite C++20 feature? Ranges, format, concepts, modules, think of all that, right? That's going to be important. What is a feature of C++23 that you might like? Why are they asking that? Because that's a future version of C++ that not a lot of companies have adopted. So you might say something like, well, I like MD span, or I like that map now has a contains method. Or you might say, I like that the indexing operator can now be used differently to deal with multidimensional arrays, for example, right? These are all things that they're looking for you to be able to hit on and speak towards. And the best way to learn about these features is via Godbolt and WandaBox, which are both online compilers. You can select the latest compiler, learn about these features, play around with them in that sort of sandbox environment. Another really good resource to get up to speed about the latest in C++ and stay up to date is a website called cppstories.com. cppstories.com is really great because the author there produces short, easily digestible blog posts and articles concerning the latest in C++, and that will really help you level up your game and just be involved, not needing to kind of search yourself, right? Be fed that information by somebody that's a very strong C++ developer that has gone through the core material that the C++ standard community publishes and really crystallize it for you in an easily digestible manner. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope it was helpful. I hope it really helped you understand what you should be learning to ace those interviews. If you'd like to speak to me one-on-one -on -one and get that more personal one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one session, you can do so. Link in the description box below, guys, for my Calendly. Thanks for watching this video. Cheers.